Hey y'all, welcome to the Talk Shiitake Podcast. We're here at the amazing Levin Kitchen and Resource Center in Decatur, Georgia. If this is your first time here, please stay a while and definitely give us a follow, like, subscribe to our page. And if you've been here before, welcome back. Again, please stay a while as well. Don't forget to hit that like button down at the bottom of the video. So my name is Fern, the Operations Director here at Levin Kitchen. And we're going to be coming at you weekly with our podcast, again, Talk Shiitake, where we're going to talk about food news of the week. We're going to meet some of our amazing Levin members, do some uh, demos on some of our equipment that we have here at Levin, and also some tips and tricks. Yeah, we're living in a world where all prices continue to rise, right? Food prices are no exception. The USDA has actually recently issued their food price outlook. Basically, they, they do a study with a lot of different factors yearly, uh, and they've just released here within the last month or so their outlook for 2022-2023. Um, being where we're at pretty much in September, m more than halfway over the year, They've estimated that food increasing for food at home, right? Meaning stuff you get at the grocery store, the supermarket. Food at home pricing is going to increase about 10 to 11% in 2022. And on top of that, food away from home or restaurant purchases, right? Takeout, what have you. They're predicting that to increase 6 to 7% by 2022. Now, while prices are still being predicted to increase in 2023, what's great for, about that, and lucky for us, they're not going to increase quite as much. I think a lot of things like inflation and, of course, the lingering pandemic, things of that nature have caused those prices to sort of skyrocket this year. Um, but they're saying in that same report, they're thinking 2 to 3% increase for grocery stores and then a 3 to 4% uh, percent increase when it comes to restaurants, takeout, things like that. Uh, one thing too, one thing to note uh, is egg prices. So with egg prices, especially if you, you know, people here at Levin have certainly seen the impact of those increasing egg prices. And even myself, I was walking through Walmart the other day, just looking at the eggs, right? And there was a couple of, you know, 18 packs and even some, some dozens that were like almost 10 bucks. And I thought that was just bananas. But apparently according to that same study, is avian flu is definitely affecting the flocks, right? The egg layer flock, they call, uh, in the U.S. And unfortunately, that has caused egg prices to increase by about 25% this year. So definitely a big increase. Uh, of course, we're a little bit doom and gloom right now with this new segment, uh, but it, that's our reality, right? So if you feel those food prices, if you feel like those have been going up and, and it's definitely affecting your pocket, you're not wrong. The study shows just that. Hey everybody, it's Maura Ash, of course, from the Gumbo Radio Show and Hits 92.3. And I am here for Talk Shiitake Podcast, of course, at Levin Kitchen. I am here with my good friend, Rochelle, from Flavor Purveyor. Talk to me. Talk to me a little bit about the products, the products that you have here and what you guys sell. Absolutely, Ash. Thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. Uh, so, Flavor Purveyor, we are a Georgia-born little company that we've got going on here at Levin. We've been here for about two years, and one of our more popular items that people might recognize are our at-home boba kits. Gotcha. So, yeah, we do have a little box that people can order online, and basically it brings boba home to you. So you get to, at home, make your own tapioca sweet sweeten it any way that you like, and have that whole boba experience at home, which is really, really fantastic. That's awesome. I also saw it comes with its own cool straw, because I feel like that's part of the whole experience as well. Yes, <laughs> yes. We're trying to be a little eco-friendly, right? We have I that stainless that. steel straw in there. We get a couple of them in there, a little straw cleaner for you. So we really are trying to set you up for success at home when it comes to like your boba tea cravings and stuff. I love it. Rochelle, talk to me about what boba tea is. For somebody that's just now hearing about this, it's been getting very popular, especially 
especially I know within middle school and high school children, they're really into it. Um, but if you don't have children within that age range and you've never heard of it, explain to me exactly what boba tea is. Absolutely. So boba tea is a tea that comes basically, I think from Thailand, that's kind of where it's first originated. And it has taken the world by storm. Like, I mean, it has really, really hit the market in a big way here mm -hmm. in the US and over the last maybe like 10 years, you'll see spot, like shops popping up here and there. Mm -hmm. So basically it's a milk tea that mm -hmm. there's combination that you do. Um, for example, in our kit, you're gonna get your bobas, which mm -hmm. are tapioca pearls. Okay. Uh, ours are like a quick cook variation. So that's the kind that you can cook at home like within like 10 to 20 minutes and then you're all set. Gotcha. Um, and then there's a tea. It's called milk tea. It doesn't have any milk in it, which is always like surprising to people. But the royal milk flavor is kind of like the traditional flavor for bubble tea. Gotcha. And then you add any kind of dairy that you'd like to add to it to give it that like milky experience. Gotcha. So it could be um, an almond milk. It could be like a, you know, a oat milk, anything that you kind of like choose to put in there. But it's just a really silky, almost snack drink gotcha. when you experience it. So it's got some really rich, nutty flavors to it. It's very refreshing, awesome on ice. And uh, basically you get to sweeten it as much as you want. So even when you go it's and you taste. order them, yeah, mm -hmm. at different places, like they'll always ask you like, how sweet do you want it? That kind of thing. So it's a really like make your own adventure type experience. Is it safe to say that it's like half milk, half tea? Yes, I would say so. It's like a milk version of an almond palm. Right, palm. with a little snack in there too. <laughs> right. With a little snack in there so too that's with what the I was boba. Gonna ask you about. So what exactly is the, the boba part? So what it what is what are the black things that we see floating around? So those are the tapioca pearls. Okay. Right. So tapioca is a type of starch. Um, I want to say that, you know, it's like it's kind of like a gummy experience almost. Gotcha. Okay. So the more that you cook it, the like little squishier it is. Um, but they're really, really fun. And you'll see that like at your different stores and stuff, there's all different kinds of variations. Sometimes you'll see the ones that they pop because they're full of juices or they're flavored by like I was fruits just about and to stuff. Ask you, are yeah. they flavored? Okay. So some of them are, right? Ours are the t traditional tapioca type. Gotcha. So it's kind of like you're getting like uh, like a gummy, like starchy flavor. Gotcha. Um, but it's really, really good. And like I said, this is almost like a drink that's also a snack, mm -hmm. which is really fun, especially for kids, like when they're getting home from school and they just want a little pick me up, right? Right. As soon as they get home. That's it's for sure. Definitely something that they look for. So we talked a little bit earlier and we were talking about how a lot of people have pretty much grown accustomed to not having to go out and yeah. do anything anymore. <laughs> and we all know why, you know? Mm -hmm. So I know you said that this became a very popular item and I'm sure it still is even throughout the pandemic, but talk to people about how convenient it is for them to order this from you and then create it in their own space and how much they get out of each box. Absolutely. So our kit, is set up to basically get you about eight boba cups okay. out of each one. And that's, you know, like that we're being really generous with the servings and everything. So you can make yours last quite a while. Mm -hmm. Luckily, they tend to have a shelf life of about four to six months. Yeah. And you know, the, the ingredients, when, even tea, I think we're all guilty of it. Like we keep tea forever because mm -hmm. we're like, oh, you know, just as long as I add a little extra more, it'll always give me that flavor, you know? Um, so we're really lucky that we have those tea blends. Um, and so those are always accessible. So even if you were to run out, let's say you run out of tea before you run out of boba, yeah. you can always order more from us. And so that's kind of something that you can always keep in stock at home. So it makes it really, really easy and fun to keep. Is it one of those things where once I open it, it needs to be refrigerated or is it better out? How does it um, keep? At sure, home? absolutely. So the tapioca, we do recommend that you keep it in the fridge. Okay. And basically what happens is like tapioca is the kind of thing where it'll get soft when you cook it. Okay. And then you want to eat it pretty much like Quickly. within 24 hours mm -hmm. because if you re like cool it, it tends to get a little hard. So it's, it's not as fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. So it's definitely one of those experiences that it's going to be fresh whenever you do it because you know, it's just better that way. Mm, got it. Are there any fun add-ons? Do you have people that add things to their boba tea yes. outside of what you provide? Of course, of course, yes. There's always a lot of really fun stuff that you can buy from us. In addition, you maybe want to experiment with different flavors. Mm -hmm. We do have a whole different line of teas that we don't necessarily plug into the boba, but they are delicious all on their own. We have some beautiful like Earl Grey lavender, some mm. orange spice chamomile, all these wonderful tea varieties that you can always go home and experiment with on your own, yeah. right? 
Um, and then, of course, you also have accessories that you could access with us. So that's additional straws, straw cleaners, mm -hmm. tea bags. Uh, we have these little like filter things so that you can just pop your tea into the little filter, pop it into your like hot water yeah. and it steeps all by itself. So that's really lovely. And then, you know, with bubble tea, really, you just get creative with it. Yeah. So, I mean, we definitely um, include some fun recipes and stuff like just bubble tea ideas. and tapioca pearls have a life outside of boba, believe it or not. Yeah, I'm sure. So like right now, even on our Instagram account, we happen to have some bubble tea themed uh, cupcakes. Yeah, okay. so our like our awesome social media team were able to find a way to get boba and the flavor of our tea into cupcakes and you can make them at home. So there's a lot of really fun recipes wow. you can find on our Instagrams and socials. That's awesome. That's that's really cool, especially to think about for coming up for like Halloween and stuff because kids are really into this boba thing. So yeah. you know what I mean? It's a good way for them to kind of get engaged with it and make it more a little more fun. So how do people reach out to you? How do they shop? How do they find you? How do they follow you? How do they keep up with your new and you know trends and everything like that? Absolutely. So you can find us by looking up Flavor Purveyor. Okay. It's kind of a funky name. It's something that you definitely want to remember. Flavorpurveyor.com is our shop online. You can go ahead and you can find us there. We are available on Etsy as well. Oh. Um, and then we also have wonderful like you know buyers that we're seeing through Fair. So you know here working out of Levin, you know we're working on a scale that means that we are able to work and be present in like boutiques and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So every once in a while we get really excited because people will send us pictures like, oh, we found you like in North Carolina, we found you here at this shop. So it's a lot of fun and we've been kind of growing our markets that way. Yeah. But yeah, you can definitely find us on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook. Um, and it's usually all at flavor purveyor or a flavor underscore purveyor. Gotcha. So go ahead and take a look for us there. And we are always, always excited to hear back from people. So my last question, being a Levin Kitchen member, so um, talk to me about the experience of starting from, you know, like you said, Georgia, Georgia started and mm -hmm. then kind of growing into a big enough, you know, needing your own suite, you know, not, know. Gonna, not gonna strip you either too much, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like being able to come into this amazing space and have your own space within this space to create from, mm -hmm. and you guys are very productive. So how, how was that journey for you? Absolutely. So the company actually grew, it was a little love project, right? Our owner, Katie Watts, her and her husband are just tea people. Mm -hmm. They have always been fascinated by it, the origins, the flavors, experiencing what you can like make out of combining all these different flavors and spices. And so they started off as a little company that would do like farmers markets and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And over time, they just kind of realized, you know, uh, we want to continue to grow. We want to do have something more like a home base. And I think that's when they found their way to Levin. So ever since they've been here, they have progressively grown every year. Uh, we do. We're real lucky. We happen to have our own little suite that here at Levin, which though. is really fun <laughs> and nice because we still get to like, you know, party and just have time to connect with all the other little businesses that are here, kind of cross, like, you know, examine our like mm -hmm. Statistics and stuff like that and have conversations about growth and like get advice from everybody mm -hmm. and at the same time we're in a confined space that makes it possible for us to you know uh, be classified as you know um, allergy free or like stuff like that where you need a more com like contained environment mm -hmm. in order to function mm -hmm. um, so we've even advanced to the point where we've gotten some fun new machinery we've been able to expand our team it's really really been an awesome. awesome experience having the support of Levin and yeah. being able to like be a part of community and at the same time kind of like build and feel like we're established enough to make big steps in yeah, the future. Absolutely. And then with the type of kits that you guys create, I'm sure like just having that space of organization, it makes mm -hmm. it a lot better too for just putting those things together. So absolutely. Thank you for coming today and being a part of this. Um, again, you guys can find her, of course, these amazing products. Find them at flavorpurveyor.com mm -hmm. or at flavor.purveyor. And then email them, of course, if you want to put in an order or have any further questions at hello at flavorpurveyor.com. Rochelle, thank you for being here. We appreciate you. Thank you guys for being Levin members. And thank you guys for watching and tuning in to Talk Shiitake Podcast here at Levin Kitchen. Of course, with more Ash and the Gumbo Radio Show, you guys.
back, y'all, to the Talk Shiitake podcast for another cooking segment or a prep segment, right? So today we're gonna demo a food processor. Now this is a big guy. It is a 10 liter or 11 quart food processor. Um, and it has sort of this big, what they call an S blade, right? It has a bigger S blade. Um, if you're, you know, if you've been to our channel before, you probably saw us talking about one of the smaller food processors or like that Roboku food processor. This is essentially your same concept, it's just on a bigger level. So I have a few ingredients here. We're actually gonna make some homemade breadcrumbs. So just starting off with, you know, about four cups or so of bread. Um, we're gonna let it do its thing in the food process, processor, right? Let it sort of grind down to a nice fine powder or coarse powder, right? You wanna do whatever works best for you, right? To your preference. Then um, you wanna transfer it either to a pan um, and then throw it in the oven or you can do it. This specific recipe you can actually make on your stove top as well. So we're gonna go ahead and dive right in here. Couple of things I wanna go over first is just the pieces of the food processor, right? You have your big base here, big bowl here or container. So with this guy, again, it's gonna be roughly or fit roughly 10 quarts. You have your S blade and then you have your nice clear um, lid. So with this lid, it is tempered glass. So if it were to fall and break, it's not gonna have glass everywhere. There's also a little, for lack of a better term, a little, little hole here that you can open right up. Easier said than done. It's a nice sort of rubberized material. But if you have this guy, you have it going and you wanna add some product as it goes, you're able to do so as well. Uh, if you've already seen our immersion blender uh, video portion, same brand, Vivor, they make commercial stuff. You can also use this stuff at home. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and dive right into this recipe. So when you're using this guy, always of course important to be food safe. We're making breadcrumbs here. Yes, we're gonna throw them in the oven. Definitely throw your gloves on though, just in case. But this guy here has sort of a post right in the middle. It's a little hard for you to see from where you're at. But what you do is you sort of line it up with that post, bring it right down, and then you turn it. The reason you wanna turn it and make sure it's on the proper way is this bar right here actually coincides with the magnet inside of the unit. And that's just for safety purposes. You wanna make sure you're being safe with this guy and they have that built in right into the product, which is great. So of course, step one, you wanna start with your blade. It's really important with this guy that you do it properly. You don't wanna force it down. There are little grooves inside that you can't see. Um, and then of course, be careful with it, right? I'm sort of jostling it around here, but these are super sharp. You can definitely nick a finger or cut your arm or what have you. But really what you wanna do is sort of just set it on here and then spin it. That, that spinning action is actually gonna make it sort of sit right into place and then you can push it down. The reason you don't wanna force it in there if it's not sort of going in by itself is because those grooves can be um, misaligned. And if you force it down there, it's gonna be almost impossible to pull that guy out without a lot of elbow grease. And again, you wanna prolong the life of your machine, make sure it's working properly. So now we're gonna go ahead and add our breadcrumbs here, or our bread rather, for our breadcrumbs. We're gonna use our other ingredients in a minute, um, but really you simply just start with your bread and you can use any kind of bread. I went for some, um, there's a, a new store in the area called Lidl that, that I uh, have hit up. Uh, I feel kind of like I'm cheating on Aldi a little bit. Um, so, but the, the way I like to describe it is Lidl is sort of the target versus Aldi's Walmart, right? We all like to save money, but I like, I'm very impressed with Lidl's bread quality. They have a bread case and, and it's fantastic. Of course, this isn't a, a video to talk about Lidl, but that's what I'm using today is some of their dinner rolls, but you can use just basic bread. Some people like to leave it out a little bit and make sure it gets a little hard. It's just whatever you wanna roll with. Again, this is a big guy, um, so you can make quite a bit, uh, essentially a bigger recipe if you'd like. We're, we're just doing maybe five or six rolls, but I'm gonna go ahead and get it started here. So you of course have your machine. Again, this is lined up. And as I was talking there, one thing I didn't talk about is the lid and the design. There is a little groove here that's meant to sort of sit down right on here and you notice it's spring action. So there is a pin right in the middle of this bar 
that actually holds the unit in place. So it actually goes right down into the base of this unit. And that's actually what keeps it in place. That guy's gonna turn really quick as you start the machine and you don't want that jostling around or even moving around. Once it's in there, it's in there. And again, this is a safety feature. Once that pin is down, that means you're good to go. The lid is on and you're ready to start the machine. Pretty simple button layout right here at the front. We of course have your off and on. You have your start button there. So as soon as I hit that right, it started for me. But then you have your emergency stop. So a few different functions uh, and features there. And on the side here is sort of a reset button. If, you know, if there's a power surge or something happens, again, also for safety, kind of like a, you know, a GFI uh, plug on your wall, it's gonna sort of trip on the machine so you're not messing up your electrical throughout your home or your business or whatever it is. So that being said, we're gonna go ahead, we're on the on uh, portion here, and we're gonna simply just hit start. Again, there's a nice... So we of course hit start, and again, there's a nice window here. So you can actually go in and look at the product, stop the machine like I did there by pushing the stop button. And if I wanna keep on going and, and keep on making a finer breadcrumb, I can do just that. And as you notice, as I press it, I can either pulse just like that, or I can, or I can sort of press and hold, and it'll keep the machine going for me. Now I do find when making breadcrumbs, whether it's a big guy like this or even your smaller food processor at home, pulsing is actually gonna be the way to go because it sort of just lets stuff settle in there again. And depending on the blade that you're using in there, it's gonna sort of give you that fine uh, breadcrumb that you're really looking for. Or again, even coarse, it just depends on what you're making in with your recipe. So I'm gonna do it a couple more times here. I'm not gonna do it to its fullest, but then we'll transfer it to the pan, add some more of the ingredients and then, you know, I'm not gonna show you where we're gonna put it in the oven right from there. You would put it in the oven and be good to go. So I think that's good for now. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this guy off. And then from there, you just disassemble it in reverse, right? So go ahead and just undo these latches here. Get my lid off, you notice that spring form it sprung right back up there for me. Gonna get this guy ready. This smells good, it smells like bread, like dinner rolls. And then you just spin it and then take them right back out. As you can see here, I have, these are a little bit on the, on the coarser end. This machine, again, is a nice big machine. I probably, sh probably should have doubled the recipe there, which is okay, right? But this gives you the idea. It's gonna crumble up that bread nicely for you. But we're gonna go ahead and just dump all of this into our container here. Make sure I get everything there. Now, again, you're able to sort of see that texture, see it there. Um, and again, this is a little bit coarser, a little bit bigger pieces in there. That's okay. It's a homemade uh, breadcrumb. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can do it really fine. You can leave it coarse. It's really what you want to roll with. So from there, just going along with my recipe here, we're going to go ahead and add two tablespoons of olive oil. And we'll do that now. If you're making it a pan, you will add, you would add, or on the stove top rather, that you would add the olive oil sort of into the pan first and sort of let it heat up there a little bit. In this case, I'm sort of just gonna drizzle it on here. From there, I'm going to add, it calls for about a quarter teaspoon of dried thyme. This is just your typical thyme leaves, right? That it's, um, you know, in a bottle, right? You just find this in your spice aisle. I usually like to roll with a little bit more spices just because it's delicious, right? It smells good as well. And then from there, salt and pepper to taste. So we're adding our pepper. You're gonna add, calls for a pinch. So really what you feel comfortable with and what your flavor profile is. And then we'll add our salt. And again, to taste. From there, I usually like to give it a little toss, sort of give every, get everything in there, get it nice and mixed up. 
And now my breadcrumbs are ready from the oven and I'm good to go. And then just finally, what I wanna talk about, how to clean this guy, pretty simple, right? Like most of our your, your heavy duty machines or most of your equipment inside of a commercial kitchen, a lot of this stuff, you don't wanna run through the dishwasher. So you'd run this guy right through, you know, a three compartment sink, you're gonna to wanna to hand wash it. Same thing with your lid. There are some exceptions, right, to that rule. Typically, I like to just roll everything through, you know, through the three comp sink versus a dish machine. Um, but there, you know, just read your manual, right? So there are some machines that allow for dishwasher, and that's okay. Um, just make sure you're doing the right thing for what you have. And then from there, you can sort of just spray this guy down. As with everything, even though there's no blades or anything on there, you still wanna unplug it from the wall before you clean it, but give it a good spray down, wipe it down, clean, sanitize all of your stuff. And really what that'll do for you is prolong the life of your machine, right? Maintenance is key, but also how we're taking care of things and how we're cleaning things. We wanna make sure we're doing it the right way and proper. Once again, this has been a demo of some of our cooking equipment here at Levin. Catch us next time where we'll be going over a juicer, a manual juicer. All right, y'all, this has been the Talk Shiitake podcast here at Levin Kitchen. I'd like to thank everyone for joining me today and talking some shiitake with me and Ash. Please join us every week where we're gonna talk about more news, some tech. I'm a big tech nerd, so I like to talk about anything tech, and that includes food tech as well. So come on back every week. We're gonna be uploading these every Monday for your enjoyment and for also for your education as well. Maybe you didn't know how to use you know, some of the equipment that we've gone over today, uh, and maybe you'll learn something. Uh, I wanna thank our guest today for joining us uh, and letting us talk about you and your business and, and really what Levin means to you so we can continue to improve, of course, but also so you, our viewers, can buy their products. We have so many different businesses that we'll be featuring every week. So please don't forget to like, subscribe, and then come back and join us next week for more of the Talk Shiitake podcast.